I V M. Welcome to another week on IVM Podcast. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. This week on Cyrus Says, Cyrus talks to restauranteers Pankaj Shah, Abhishek Kunawar, and Sumit Kambir of Neighborhood Hospitality. They talk about their past and they talk about their future. They talk a lot more about their future in a new show that we got launching called The Kulaba Cartel. Please make sure that you check that out as well. In a two-episode special on the Pragati Podcast, Pavan and Hamsini are joined by author and legal expert Rahul Mathan to discuss the Sri Krishna Report and India's stress with the concept of privacy. On Shuni One this week, we have Vishal Gondal from the Vishal Gondal Show. He takes us through his journey on Goki. And just a quick shout out to all of our listeners. Along with the Kolaba Cartel, we have a whole host of other shows launching this month. So stay tuned to the IVM Podcast app and make sure that you follow all of our new shows as well. Hello, welcome to Football Portal. From starting this year onwards, or this season onwards, we are going to have a second show which releases every Thursday and we talk about the Fantasy Premier League. It's a show exclusive for Fantasy Premier League. I welcome my two good friends, Baru. You need to say hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Kana. Hello, guys. Yeah, so we are going to talk about Fantasy Premier League. The first thing, question yeah, we is... We are your Fantasy Premier League experts for this season. Yes, so... The first question I need to ask you, Baru, is that how do you play Premier, Fantasy Premier League? How do you even choose the first team? So, I usually start with the auto assign, auto randomize. <laughs> <laughs> and that just gives you a good playing field you know, like, to see what to tweak around with. Because yeah. the commitment is lesser to choose new players then. Because when you're looking at a blank slate, so you're the not pressure going... is too much. But this way, like at least someone has done it. Uh, so you can tweak it I a little. I can tweak it. I don't think that's a really good model. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to talk more about research and development, but <laughs> yeah, whatever. Kano, you seem like a research sort of a guy. Yeah, so, <laughs> no, I chose my team last, I think Sunday I sat down for a couple of hours and chose my team. You know what, let's do an exercise. Let's make my fantasy Premier League team. No, no, no we, we we'll, do that from next week. Yeah. We just no, need to... Yeah, so, I took the brave, brave call of, you know, going with Salah again. <laughs> the brave call? Yeah. How is it brave? <laughs> No, because you never know if he might end up being a one-season wonder or is he going to play as many minutes. Liverpool have a lot of options yeah, Before now. we get to who, who you took, what do you look into? Like, when you have to like... No, so, so I, like, I, I agree with Baru completely. The blank slate is just too much pressure. No, so I go with marquee players for... The players I really need to have in my team. Huh. That's how I start off. So, I took Salah in midfield. I took Aubameyang in attack. And then I build my team around them. Yes. Because I don't... With the auto, you know, select feature... You can't play around with your budget that much. So I know when I'm having a Aubameyang for 11.5 and, and a Salah for 13, mm. then I only have that much amount of money left to bring the others. Then I really wanted to get you know someone from Fulham because I'm excited to see them play. Yes. So I took one Fulham player in. Mitro? No, I got uh, Sherla. Oh, okay. Huh. Again, a brave call. Uh, what a brave admi hai yaar. With keepers, <laughs> I usually go with someone. You know, now Edison is going to have clean sheets, but... I prefer someone who, you know, gets more points by saves. You prefer. But uh, that's a question, Baru, probably then. How would you choose a keeper? I've seen you take keepers who basically are like <laughs> from rundown teams. Yeah, I mean, because those are the guys who get more points. Yeah. Like Pope from last season. Yes. So he but was did he get more points than David Day? Yeah. Close enough for a slightly lesser price. Yeah, I think the price difference also has to... That extra, you know, that difference in price can actually be the difference between... Uh, and this is something I've never figured out in at least the Fantasy Premier League is that do I go with high price defenders or not? I, so, I, they, I've played it for like 10, 11 years and I think what it's I never do is with defenders, I always go with fullbacks. Uh, centre forwards, probably one if he can give you, you know, someone who's like backs. good at a centre back with, you know, who has a good uh, goal scoring record from like corners, John, Ter- John Terry used to give John Terry used to points. Give good Bob points. Allen, John Terry. Uh, yeah. But you know, you compare the past two, three seasons for Chelsea, uh, Aspi and Alonso both uh, have been giving really good points. Yeah. Uh, last season when Aspi moved to the centre, he gave yeah, his so. points uh, dropped down. Yeah, I think apart from Alonso, last season Tottenham's defenders were like really good. Yeah, I think Big Ben, ben Davies especially. So that's why I think, uh, and you know, when you have less budget left, so someone like uh, Southampton, uh, like Bertrand from Southampton, hmm. or 
स्पेशल फीचर्स ऑफ द फैंटेसी प्रीमियर लीग लाइक यू कैन प्ले वाइल्ड कार्ड राइट The yeah, wild card. I mean, yeah. They give you three wild cards. Two yes. wild cards. Uh, sorry, three uh, chips. 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 Uh, apart from the two wild cards, so you have your bench boost, hmm. which is uh, where you can get you know all the points all the over points your bench. Yeah, four more players instead of just eleven. And then then you have a free hit where you can make as many changes as you want. And it's, it's basically like a mini week. wild card. Yeah. And the third one, one is the double triple, triple, triple captain. Yeah. Now, do you guys play wild card quite early into the season? I have seen actually in the group which the three of us are in, everyone plays their wild card at least seventy percent so, within the first. So that 10 was weeks. the case till last season because you know uh, people used to play the wild card after the first round after the transfer window had closed. Yeah. But now this season with the transfer window closing, uh, you know, because there are a lot of deadline day deals happening. Yeah. You know, some big player coming in, some player moving. So that why you need to why play. would anyone want to use a wild card so early into the season? Because, uh, like I said, with a big player moving, you can't just swap a big player in and out. Yeah. For that, you need at least two three transfers to adjust the budget, which oh. is where a wild card comes in. And now also, uh, you know, a lot of people go with a lot of unknown players. Yeah, I mean, on. the thing is that uh, all these new uh, newly uh, promoted, promoted teams, clubs, yeah. Even though uh, they might be like a star, you In know, who actually led the entire promotion yeah. uh, campaign. It is more often than not. There's also this other guy who might have just come in, you know, who fits into that. Yeah. that fresh There are players, you know, you've not team. followed for the last season. You don't know them that well. So you take a chance on them for the first uh, four, five, six games, and then and after see. that, yeah, when once you have you a cannot, clear idea, ah, you cannot completely predict exactly. like who's going to be. Whatever. So before we talk about this season, even Azad, for example, yeah, we yeah, just you spoke, know, we just spoke like, about so much in the last episode. Never know what uh, state of mind he's going to exactly. be. Exactly. So why would you select him then? Why just waste the but, money? But right? if you see that you know he has his heart in the game, then six seven games in you get him back in. Yeah, All right. So let's in. talk about last season. Who, who, which player disappointed you the Pogba. most in the fantasy league? Pogba. For you sure. had him for quite some time. I had him for quite a long time because uh, when you compared with two seasons back, Pogba was the player who hit the the woodwork the most. He had like around I don't know ten fifteen shots. I think yeah. like on the word work. So he was that close to like ten fifteen Go- goals. Yes, that's the way I looked at it. And he is an amazing player. His assists have always been amazing. Yeah, it's just that in the United, uh, the end result like you know from a FPL point of view, he wasn't like really getting those points in. Okay, let's talk about the previous season and which. Player obviously surpassed your expectations beyond As belief. Mo, Mo Salah, Salah. Mo other than Mo Salah, I think uh, Wadi again gave a decent run of points last season. Also, yeah, yeah, always under the radar. But Wadi. and who has this? Who disappointed you the most? You didn't. Take I think that was uh, Mkhitaryan because I had him at the start. The first month he was so yes. you know brilliant, and <laughs> then he was benched and yes. Okay, so let's talk about this season. The first question I have for you guys is: We know Obama Young is in like massive form. Yeah. But the first three games are Man City, Chelsea, and, and uh, West Ham. And when they play Liverpool, when I think that's the fourth game. Fourth game. Would you pick Obama Yang? Given the first, have. you can change till Friday. So, given the tough fixtures that you guys have till now, at least the first four weeks. Well, see the way I mean his game is. He is the type of player who can create one of those amazing chances out of nothing. But I, he's worth eleven and a half. So. Huh. I mean that is. The other option is to take someone like Aguero or something on the other side. <laughs> yes. Looking at Arsenal's uh, new defense that we have in place this season. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go with Aubameyang. Yeah. But Kano, you have <laughs> uh, last season. I think he played about fourteen games and he had nine goals. Ha, huh, his return was pretty awesome. Yeah, but given the tough start to the season, still I think one chance is all it takes. So I still huh? have him in my squad. I am backing him. All right. As an Arsenal fan, also I think there's some what of a bias coming in. But yeah, who was one of you two guys were like didn't have any Arsenal player in their team? I think Baru had for the most period no Arsenal. Player. I had Nelson. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah right. like for ten <laughs> games in the start. Yeah. Because of that amazing preseason, I had Nelson for the longest time. <laughs> All right. The second question is the people returning from World Cup. Yeah. Right. They've just come back. Would you risk first two three weeks on that? At least I am not taking risking anyone from uh, France and England. Although you know, uh, Kyle Walker already played in ninety minutes. Yeah, almost. 
and he has already said you know pepe said uh, no the tottenham guy pochettino pochettino has already said that <laughs> Yeah, it's so irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, but what did he, he say? Has, he said that no, I, one of Kane or uh, Dele will start in the first week. Really? But I don't think he will risk Kane for. Yeah. Because he he had a lot risk, of minutes also. It, it doesn't matter about how many minutes he played in the World Cup. Match fitness. But no, it doesn't really. In Kane's case, I think the stats say that Kane shouldn't play for the first two months in, yeah. in yes. the English Premier League. First that, month rather. That was the third question. This whole August thing. You would pick Kane? No. No. <laughs> what if he actually scores this? So time? let him score, man. <laughs> And what's your strategy for clubs which are like you know Newcastle, Burnley, Burnley? You need to pick someone from there. Yeah. So yes. how would you go about like <laughs> would you just automatically pick someone who's earned the highest points last season? No. I think I'd go with that actually. Yeah man, you I mean, and just you and I have a match are on the same wavelength for fantasy premier league. Yeah, it's so only the to, we have to talk about finishing you know, positions the, that separates us. Basically <laughs> yeah. like from Newcastle I would pick someone uh, like Perez. Because he's the only one who stands out in that team so if anything good is going to happen it's going to come through him. Yeah, but if he gets no service he won't score then he'll He still has that, so and he'll concede goals, and basically he'll give you one point in Perez the game. Perez is a forward, so he won't concede goals. No, but he'll still give you like one point in the game, mostly. Yeah, but then so if you need a like a cheap option, five million, you have to pick someone. You can't That's pick someone. That's exactly who's my not, point. Who would you pick? I told you, like someone who I feel can bring in that spark, who has, who will give me at least a goal every three games. Hmm. The fourth question is, would you pick anyone from Manchester United, like anyone? Degio. Why they, their defense has Smalling and Phil Jones? Yes, sir. I mean, it's a Mourinho side which at the gives, end of the day. Which gives which gives more chances to save also, and you know saves bring you points. Three point. How much? What's the so scoring? Three, every three, three saves, saves one point. point, right? Oh God! So other than De Gea, there's no one in Man U you could pick, right? Sanchez is too overpriced. How much is Sanchez priced? Who is the most expensive player in FPL? It has to be Salah Harry, or Harry Kane. Kane. Harry Kane. Kane and. Arsenal Ozil any not uh, right away uh, pre season has been amazing this time i think after that whole uh, germany yeah. uh, bullshit yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better word yes. he has been playing really like a huge you know a lot of weight has gone off his shoulder he is more confident in his passes he's basically controlling the game and i think he is this is going to be like a really good season, season for, him. for him plus he is the new captain so okay oi right, finally can now three yeah. picks for this week's fpl for this week right? this week and reasons why first of all uh, i'm going with richarlison who are they playing everton <laughs> wolves and you're picking with richarlison yeah okay because you think he's going to obviously score goals then i think i'm going to go with uh, mitrovic because they're playing crystal palace uh, they have a good start they have a good team and they have an e- a relatively easy, easy start easy start and third obameyang yeah. Not against City. I think probably the next <laughs> match onwards. Uh, I have Aubameyang in my team. Uh, Dude, I'm surprised. Like none of you guys consider Sanchez at least for the first weekend. He has been in good form. He's come back fit, and they're playing Leicester. Too expensive. That's the thing. Yeah, but I'm just talking about this weekend, yeah. not about whether you need to keep him for a month yeah. or not. So, Baru, your well, three I picks. I think uh, uh, I think Martial might be an off pick. Nah, yeah, he won't even be in the team. He will be. Mourinho doesn't have players. Rashford. Play. He's only played for sixty minutes. But yeah, I agree picks. with Rich Allison as one of the top picks because I mean, not just this weekend. I mean, it's as a team, uh, he's a good guy to have because of the line mm. of fixtures that they are. Mane for Liverpool, uh, slightly less expensive than Liverpool is playing who? West Liverpool Ham. are playing West Ham. West Ham has got enough players. So yeah, at home. So, so you you wouldn't pick Salah over Mane for this weekend? I think yeah. I mean the price. Is again a factor, and the yeah. third one, and probably I'll go with uh, Shakiri. Not sorry, not Shakiri. <laughs> oh, I think one from Liverpool is enough. Uh, <laughs> probably someone from my my Wolves. other team. Wolves. What? Ruben Neves. <laughs> Wolves. Who? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I said three picks. I didn't say give me a three yeah, so teams. <laughs> probably uh, Diego or something. Diego. Diego. Diego Jota. Hota. How do you pronounce Hota, his name? Hota. Hota, Hota but Hota. <laughs> what what position does he play? He's in midfield, right? So I think it's a Wolves are playing Everton. Wolves yeah. are playing Everton. Leicester. So you have picked 
इंटरेस्टिंग एफ पी एल फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट वीक ऑनवर्ड्स इट विल बी गिवन दैट वी डन वन गेम वीक वील टॉक अबाउट द ड्रीम टीम एंड वील ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट अ पिक्स एंड गेम्स टू लुक फॉरवर्ड टू एटलीस्ट फ्रॉम एफ पी एल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो फ्रॉम दिस वीक ऑनवर्ड्स प्लीज टेट ट्यून इन एंड लिसन इन टू फुटबॉल टोटल द एफ पी एल एडिशन Again, thank you very much, guys, for listening in and for speaking up. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I try have a platform. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi, I am Vishal Gondal, an entrepreneur. I've had the chance to meet and understand how some of the super achievers have hacked their way to success. and they have done spectacular innovations now i take a closer look at these people's lives to find out what lies beneath the force only on the vishal gondal show episodes out fortnightly on wednesdays on the ivm website app or your favorite podcasting platform some time ago five successful restauranteurs came together to form the kolaba cartel the founders of the table gori devi dayal and jay yusuf partnered with the founders of woodside inn abhishek honawar pankil shah and sumit gambhir to open a new restaurant in kolaba if you've ever dreamed of opening a restaurant or love eating out you want to listen in the kolaba cartel This exclusive 10 part series is hosted by Gauri Devi Dayal and Amit Doshi. Catch new episodes of The Kolaba Cartel every Monday and Thursday on the IVM Podcasts app, website or wherever you get your podcasts.